and she was calling me. She kept saying, you gotta come get me, you gotta come get me, I gotta get out of this house, I have to get out of this house. She's calling me again. I didn't have my own car, I drove my father's car. He always let me take the car, and he told me no. Well, initially I was angry because in my young 18-year-old mind, I said, oh, I would have protected her. Middletown, Connecticut. The year was 1985 and Lisa Berry was an upcoming track and field star. She had just accepted a scholarship to Amherst College. One day in late July, Lisa went jogging at around 5.30 p.m. and she would never be seen alive again. The next day, August 1st, she was found dead in less than three feet of water. The medical examiner determined her death a homicide. 35 years later, Lisa Berry's case is still unsolved. Experts say that there are around 260,000 cold cases in the U.S. A cold case is a case that has run out of leads but is still open, pending new information into solving it. The only thing victims' families seem to want is an answer. Most of the time, they will never get one. Come along as we dive into Lisa Berry's 35-year-old murder case that has gone cold. Wow, where did it go? My sister was a sweetheart. Um, she. This was the joy of our whole family. Um, a lot of us didn't finish high school. My sister excelled in school. She did very well. She was headed for college with all, um, uh, she just didn't make it to college. She, was, she stayed home from school that day. I was at my mom's house and I was cooking um, barbecue chicken in the oven and she came down. She had been in bed most of the day. She wasn't feeling well and she came down and she said, uh, wow, something smells good here. And I opened the oven and I showed her what I was cooking and uh, she said, I'm going for my run, which she did every day. Um, she just never came back. And up on the hill where she lived, there was a basketball court and a little park where you could park. So Lisa proceeds to go for a run, maybe around 5, 5.30. Her brother, Bob, downstairs cooking. And she said, I'm going to go for a quick run. I'll be right back. Uh, Westlake is like, um, it's like a long, long, long street. And then you turn left or right into a million of these condos. But on the main street, you could just run. It's definitely a couple miles. So she would do that whole run and then she would come back. In route back on the right hand side when she was coming back heading home, that whole area was nothing but woods because they didn't um, develop that yet, any uh, condos or anything, but there were trails inside those, those woods that people would go and party or take a shortcut or whatever. And that's where her body was found. So <clears throat> her body was found. It was in a per percolator hole, a manhole, and they didn't put the covering back on it. Less than a foot of water or whatever it is. There was some water because it had rained. And um, she was held down because of the marks and, uh, you know, bruising on her arms. She was held down and basically drowned um, in that little amount of water. Um, I could cry just thinking about it. We, um, when she never came home, it's 6.30, it's 7, now it's getting dark. Her brother's like, what the heck, she should have been back. Like, Lisa can run that in like less than an hour. Yeah, um, me and a friend of mine, we organized a volunteer search and we found the founder which was so funny because we found her close to my house that we had thought we'd scoured everything. Uh, so <clears throat> they, they were looking, 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 and then found her on the August 1st, and then they actually buried her on Bob's birthday. And it was, it was kind of horrible, everything that happened with the police and everything, because we knew exactly there was something wrong, but the police didn't take it 
um, as seriously as we did. And we tried calling the police that night and they said we couldn't do anything until she was missing for 24 hours. So 24 hours and one second, my mom called the police back again and that's when they sent the detective out who got very close to our family. Back then, they didn't do proper um, concealing of evidence, clothes. They didn't preserve it properly. You know, they probably just threw it in a box. Like, I don't even know what they did with it. But I do remember that, I don't know, I was probably going over that house every day after work. Definitely all, you know, on weekends, I would be there on Saturdays. One time I was there, so I answered the door one day, and there was two little boys one of them had one of Lisa's sneakers. It was a complete mess how they took care of it. It was a complete mess. You know, and I watch cop shows all the time, and I was like, man, why didn't they do this a long time ago? I think the police made a whole mockery of it. I didn't think they took it as seriously as they should have, and it seemed like my sister's case went slowly downhill, like nobody really gave too much. See, there's a burden of proof, and it's kind of hard, because still today, I think I know what happened to my sister. Proving it is a whole different thing, and I have to live with that all the time. Now, there had, there had been an issue with her and this male person that uh, was not good. And I had gotten into a couple physical altercations with him because I didn't want him near my sister. That's who, that's who I really think did it. I don't believe he did anything wrong. I believe that she pissed him off so much and he was one of those people that, um, you know, if I can't have you, no one else will. Do I ever think I'm gonna get closure? Um, that's a hard question. That's a hard question. As, of, as I sit here today, no, I don't. Sometimes I think I may never get it. And I think of my mom. My mom passing away without knowing. My sister passing away without knowing. So closure is like so hard. Well, my dad always told me life is not fair, yeah. but I never really comprehended how much it could be like this because I've never felt hurt. Between my sister and my son, I didn't know life could hurt so much. You know, and you can't tell me that one, if you saw this street, mm -hmm. a lot of these condos were high-rise buildings and all the windows are facing the woods where she was found. See something, even if they don't know what they saw, if they saw a car pulled over on the side of the road, like they have to have seen something. She was just a bright light, a shining star. She was, she was the light in that family. And she was such a, so well known by everybody. Teachers, you know, young kids, older kids, grandparents, like everybody. She was literally, she volunteered. She would give me the shirt off her back. She was the kindest, sweetest girl. Also unfortunate and so sad because this girl would have gone on to do amazing. Just like children sleeping, we could dream this night away. But there's a full moon.
let's go.